Hi, this is Charlie, giving you Monday's market commentary. I hope you're all very well. Let's start off with TEF, um, Trader Embellishment Factor. I, I had it on my mind um, oh, a couple of months ago now, or a month or so ago when I was on uh, holiday, um, about just thinking through general things about the markets and traders. And um, and, and TEF is, is quite common in the markets where you, know, you, you speak to a trader and they say, oh, yeah, I made 200 points on this trade. And then you find out that actually, yeah, they, they might have made 200 points, but maybe on their last tenth of the trade, and yet actually the bulk of their position they took off after 20 pips and things like that. You know, trader embellishment factor. And we've all been there. We've all been there when we've said, "Oh yeah, I made 50 pips," when actually you might have made 40 or 30. Or you know, people do it all the time and exaggerate. And um, it's just a, uh, a must be a fundamental thing within the trading community that traders like to exaggerate their gains. Uh, and sometimes they're genuine. And um, obviously, people's gains, of course, they are. Um, but it happens a lot, and it happens on on outside of the fence as well in the education industry um, you get a lot of embellishment actually don't we um, I'm sure we can all find plenty of examples of um, trading education firms who have embellished um, results or, or exaggerated claims and all of those sort of things so what's my point here not really any point I just made up the um, I quite like the the phrase trader embellishment factor and so from now on we can um, we can always um, um, point out TEF when we want to uh, on on um, at any stage and uh, but uh, but in the main yeah you just have to be a little bit careful of um, if you're exaggerating if you if you are one of those traders who you put your hand up and say Do you know what yeah I've, I've been um, um, a culprit of this in the past where I've said I've made 100 pips on a trade where in actual fact yeah it was on my last tenth well that means it's not a full 100 pips so um, you have to you have to be honest with yourself and say well actually am I am I kidding myself by saying these sorts of things um, and so you have to look and, and say actually I'm, I'm it's not helping me by by me embellishing a little bit there Anyway, I just uh, thought it'd be funny, and I've got some more stuff for next week. Um, okay, so the markets. Oh, there's so much going on here at the moment that I don't even know where to start. Um, but we'll start off with the S&P and the Dow, and um, and so obviously the S&P closed above two two thousand last week. Where do we go from here? I still think there's more upside to come. Um, and I had this nice short when I was on holiday, didn't I? It was on the Dow, but um, on, during this move, uh, if we find the Dow um, off screen, there it is. Um, yeah, the Dow was a nice pronounced move. Um, and the Dow's obviously got up and it's double topping at the moment, so it's struggling here. But I think the the, the there's a clue, um, and the clue is in, in the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ seems to be driving this market forwards. And I think if we, we need to go out to a to a monthly chart and, and even then zoom right out and I think I've talked about this in previous updates I forget whether I've talked about this in an update or just in the trading room but um, but either way I've talked about it or definitely in the trading room but maybe not here I don't know um, but I think this Nasdaq and I've said this or oh, if you go back oh um, maybe it was last year I said that the Nasdaq is going to be searching out for new all-time highs um, and I think this is just con this is going to this is continuing now it's not to say that we can't have um, a pullback because we haven't really had one, have we, on the monthly time frames for a long time, really? Nothing of any substance. Um, ha but having said that, um, this Nasdaq's driving forwards, and I think with the Nasdaq driving up towards towards those prior highs up there. So the prior highs, I'm just going to have a quick look here. Um, were at um, okay, uh, forty-eight sixteen. It's saying on tele charts. So it's still a long way off, um, but does it does this mean that we're not going to see any retracements um, um, prior to that? Well, it doesn't mean that, but I do think that we we're in a position where the markets could still go higher yet. Um, and so until I see any weakness, any any uh, technical uh, breadth weaknesses coming in, then and there were some breadth weaknesses here prior to this this drop off, which was great because took advantage of that. But um, but overall, the market's still fairly bullish. So overall, I'm still reasonably bullish. And until proven proven otherwise, the trend is up. So yeah, that's it. Until proven otherwise, the trend remains up. Um, at some point, we will see a retracement without a doubt. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm only, I only get interested in retracements or, or the potential for them if I see lots of things coming along. And there were lots of factors coming along from a breadth perspective, technical perspective back here. Um, but and I didn't know if we were going to follow through, but we did 
the, the Dow did what I was looking for, which was to hit the weekly 50, and um, and obviously we've come all the way back up. So now we have broken to new highs. Then we have to resume, uh, assume the trend wants to continue. So um, until proven otherwise. So um, okay, yeah, maybe a, a break below the the daily 21. That would be an indication that um, that again that if it started to roll over again there, then then you start to get a bit more suspicious that okay maybe we're going to see some some weakness and and for a while I thought oh maybe we're going to see weakness coming in in late September October of course that could still happen um, but at the moment trend remains up and um, uh, and you know and we've still got potentially quite a long way to go. Dow twenty thousand maybe. Okay, so um, that's the, that's those. I've talked about those for long enough. Let's have a look at the pound here because the pound dollar, um, it's been in a lovely, beautiful uh, trend channel, but it's quite a steep trend channel. And it's just finally come up to the upper side of this this morning. Um, managed to capitalise a little bit um, without embellishing. Um, um, yeah, I did manage to get about thirty pips. It was actually twenty eight. See, look, I just I just embellished myself. It was twenty eight pips, not thirty this morning. Um, I just like to round up. I'm sure most most traders do. <laughs> anyway, so um, but it's come up to this uh, this trend channel, and so where do we go to from here? Uh, well, I, I still see dollar, dollar strength, um, but uh, obviously at any time that could that could change. Um, and obviously the pound is an individual story. It's not always just about the dollar can continue to strength and strengthen against that basket of currencies, and yet we could still see the pound strengthen. Um, so. Um, we're, we're at resistance, so you have to assume when we're against resistance that the potential is to to back away from that resistance. Having said that, the pound has had a tremendous rundown, and um, it would only be fair to to if we looked at if we put fibs on, for example. And so, if I put um, some fibs on, and I just took us from. The highs over there down to around about the lows. We can see that a 38% retracement would take us up to just below 168. So the potential is certainly there for more upside. What I'd like to see is see how this price action behaves around this trend line. Obviously, it's had a little bit of a reaction to it this morning. We've come up to it, then the news came out this morning and it's enabled it to have a bit of a reaction. So um, I just want to see how we're going to um, react to this. And then are we going to continue through? We've got a little bit of positive momentum on the daily charts, but we're against resistance. And then we've got the 21-day moving average straight up ahead of us. So how how would I look to trade this? What I'd like to see is the pound negotiating this 21-day moving average, get on top of it, and once it's on top of it, then I'll happily play moves on the long side up towards that 38% retracement just below 168. So that to me is is a more log makes sense rather than me trying to get in too aggressive here um, and and taking it up. So that's how I'd, I'd look to play it anyway. So that's the pound dollar. Um, I think I'm just wary. I'm talking a lot this morning and 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 um, we may be running out of time. Uh, the euro dollar continues to to remain weak. We we came down a little bit last night. Um, it looks like it's having a little bit of a bounce this morning, and so on the daily charts here, it actually takes to an, an hourly chart. Yeah, so it opened last night here, um, came down, and it's already come back up a bit. So what does it mean? <laughs> Doesn't really mean much at the moment. The the euro remains weak, remains in this downtrend until proven otherwise. So it's got a lot of work to do before um, before. You know, it, it looks like there, there might be some sort of relief rally coming. Doesn't mean to say it couldn't happen this week. Um, it would need to at least, first of all, get back inside, closing back inside its daily bands here before I'd even consider it. But there's not a lot of technical, um, there's not like a lots of divergences or anything like that that are, that are saying to me that this thing has to go higher. So for me, at the moment, I'm finding other currencies for long side plays which are of more interest. Uh, the euro potentially, obviously we've got big news out this week, but potentially, so it's, it's going to be a tough call. We could just see the euro weaken some more. Um, but likewise, sometimes when you get news out, if this is all priced in, then what happens is on the ECB meeting, what happens is that we get a great big relief rally. So you you have to be aware and, and 
um, allow for either side of the coin to happen. So either the euro weaken off even more on on ECB, um, or for for a big relief rally to come in. Um, either way, I'll, I'll try and be prepared for that. And then lastly, I'd appreciate we're nine minutes into this, nearly ten minutes into this. Uh, let's have a look at. No, let's leave it at that. Right, have a fantastic few days. I'll be back on Friday for live trading. Oh, remember, on Friday, I didn't take a single trade, did I? And then literally, it was about 5 p.m. on Friday afternoon, took a small trade on the euro dollar, funnily enough, on the short side. Um, so we had a few pips out of the euro dollar in the trading room on the Friday afternoon, but all day before taking, and it only took it small because it was so late on a Friday afternoon, but um, but it was, it was, I thought it was a good lesson on, on Friday anyway of... Um, when not to trade. Right, okay, I'll leave that with you back on Friday.